Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel Roney. Today we're going to talk about early childhood neurological disorders like autism, ADHD, the autistic spectrum disorders, dyslexia, learning disabilities, behavioral disorders, etc. And we're going to introduce something called functional disconnect syndrome and hemispheric integration therapy. Okay, and I just want to give you a big picture idea of what functional disconnect syndrome is as well as what hemispheric integration therapy is. Hemispheric integration therapy is one of the most successful therapies out there today in regards to these early childhood neurological disorders and there is a, a prime reason why and it has to do with the definition of functional disconnect syndrome. So let me define that briefly just to give you an idea before we get into the PowerPoint of what this is. Essentially speaking, science now realizes that the brain of somebody diagnosed with these disorders is not damaged and there are no lesions in that brain. What it is, is weaker on one side versus the other. So just briefly, there are two hemispheres of the brain, a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. Essentially, okay, functional disconnect syndrome is weaker than the other. Now, what we know in science is that in order for the brain to communicate and what they call lateralize information, there has to be a balance in left and right hemisphere. In these diagnosed patients with these neurological disorders, what they have found is one hemisphere is weaker than the other. Okay, so in general, autism, ADHD, the autistic spectrum disorders, again, in general, is a right brain weakness. Dyslexia, learning disabilities, are mainly a left brain weakness. Okay, so let's let's talk about the imbalance and then how hemispheric integration therapy works on that diagnosis. So what I tell my patients is regardless of what your child has been labeled with, I let them know that really what they have is a brain imbalance. And again, science backs this up. This is not my theory, but this is the latest science today on these early childhood neurological disorders. So let's look at this. If I have somebody that's been diagnosed and has a right brain weakness, hypothetically, okay, what happens there? Hemispheric integration therapy understands this, what they call hemisphericity, hemispheric weakness, and will only work the weak hemisphere, okay? Because remember, functional disconnect syndrome means that the imbalance that is created here is the problem. So when hemispheric integration therapy recognizes that there's a weak hemisphere, the therapies are designed to strengthen that weak hemisphere and that weak hemisphere only. And when the hemisphere becomes stronger and stronger and stronger because of the right therapies to that area, then the imbalance lessens. When the imbalance lessens, the signs, symptoms, and characteristics decrease and or can go away. Okay. Therapy out there today does not recognize functional disconnect syndrome, meaning they do not recognize an imbalance has occurred. So what therapies do is strengthen the entire brain. Now here's the, the downside. You strengthen the entire brain and the imbalance is still there because you're, you're equally stimulating the left and the right half. Now, this is why minimal gains at best in these therapies are, are, are had because of the lack of understanding of the latest science that's out there. Okay, so once again, hemispheric integration therapy recognizes the imbalance based on that definition of functional disconnect, stimulates only the one side of the brain that's weak, and when that happens, we can get closer to balance and or equilibrium. And when that happens, signs and symptoms and characteristics will start to go away. Okay, so hopefully, that gives you just a basic understanding of functional disconnect syndrome as well as hemispheric integration therapy. The PowerPoint is going to go into these in a lot more detail and I'm going to do that in just a second. Okay, so hang tight and we'll get started in just a second. Okay, so as the introduction uh, went over, we're, we're going to really talk heavily about functional disconnect syndrome and hemispheric integration therapy. Okay, again, hemispheric integration therapy, one of the most successful uh, that's out there today based on the fact uh, or the diagnosis of functional disconnect syndrome, which is that brain imbalance. 
Real quick, I want to go over the objectives of this video. I want you to learn basic brain development, the importance and how it works, our philosophy and goals of treatment. I want you to understand the two hemispheres, both right and left of the brain, and their responsibilities. That's going to be a really good slide for you. Have a clear understanding of functional disconnect syndrome and hemispheric integration therapy. I want you to also understand what other professionals are doing and the differences in the approach and the outcomes expected. Understand the probable causes to these neurological disorders and understand how and why this treatment can be a correction and not just a management. And when we use the term correction, the reality is it depends on how severe the disconnect or the imbalance is as to how much progress we can make. So if the imbalance isn't that great, then of course we may be able to make full correction. And again, when, and I'll explain this in a second, uh, Dr. Robert Melillo, who founded this and, and who I trained under, he basically states that a cure or a correction basically means that there's no more signs or symptoms of the disorder. And it's that simple. And that disorder, once the brain is caught up and uh, maintained, then the signs and symptoms can stay away pretty much forever. Okay, so again, it, the correction, the word correction just has to do with the amount of brain imbalance that's going on. Okay, all right, brief biography on me. I'll let you read my undergrad uh, all the way down through. I have an honors, uh, excuse me, I, I graduated with an honors, with honors, with a degree in chiropractic. But right now, I'm currently working towards a diplomate in functional neurology with the certification in early childhood neurological disorders so which are the autism ADHD uh, dyslexia and uh, learning disabilities as well and behavioral disorders so I studied and trained under Dr. Robert Melillo he's the author of the best-selling book Disconnected Kids that book I'm going to highly recommend and I'll go over it at the end of this video how to get it where to get it etc but this is a uh, bestseller okay and founder he's the founder of the hemispheric integration therapy and uh, to date one of the most successful well documented therapies out there okay so very very important here this book I'll certainly direct you on how to get and even if uh, prior to this somebody wants to come in to see me or bring their child or themselves in for a an evaluation I have them read this book first okay so it's very very important okay so let's go over word for word what functional disconnect syndrome is okay we talked about it in the intro it is a brain imbalance there are no lesions okay or damage to the brain the two hemispheres of the brain are not electrically balanced this electrical imbalance interferes with the ability of the two hemispheres right and left to share and integrate information meaning the brain can simply not function as a whole with that imbalance. The result is a child or somebody diagnosed with these neurological disorders may have normal or unusually good skills associated with the higher functioning side and unusually poor or bad skills associated with the underactive or disconnected side of the brain. Okay, and again, if you reduce the imbalance, those signs, symptoms, or, or poor skills, if you will, will start to go away. All right. So let's look at this next slide is is perhaps one of the most important that we'll go over here today. Okay. So if you see on the left side here, you'll see left brain characteristics. Okay. What the left brain is responsible for. So you see a list there. On the right side here, you'll see what the right brain is responsible for. So as I talked about in the introduction, generally autism ADHD and the autistic spectrum disorders is a right brain weakness and after you go through these with me or I go through them with you you'll be able to see what I mean dyslexia and learning disabilities is basically a left brain weakness okay so let's go over just pick a couple of these and compare and contrast here so autistic children in general not very good socialization skills uh, not very good at communication skills, etc. in general, right? We're just generalizing right now. Why? Because the right brain is really responsible for something called nonverbal communication and socialization skills. In order to have socialization, and uh, if you look over here on the left side, verbal communication, 
A child must develop nonverbal communication first. Well, what is that? Well, it's the ability to look at somebody's face and know that they're sad or happy or what have you and feel that emotion, okay? If you do not have nonverbal communication skills, you will not be able to interpret what somebody is feeling without them communicating it to you, okay? Even if you communicate it to that person without nonverbal communication skills, they won't understand, okay? That's why parents will tell you, I could cry, I could laugh, and the child basically, or the person that has these, uh, this disorder, does not even blink an eye. They don't recognize it because, and to give you an example, as a baby, after a few months, a baby will start looking at you, you smile, they smile. You know, you frown, they frown. They're mimicking you, but what, what is really happening is, they're developing that right brain and the nonverbal communication skills. So then they can feel the emotion that you're feeling based on that. In order to verbally communicate, you have to be able to do that. Okay, so again, with a right brain weakness, you're not going to have very good nonverbal communication skills, so your socialization skills are going to be weak as well. All right, look under here. Large muscle control, spatial awareness, right? On the left, small muscle control. So what we tend to see is right brain weakness. You'll see uh, kids with very poor spatial awareness, meaning they're clumsy. They bump into everything, okay? And that's because their large muscle control, their postural muscles, are not being controlled very well because their right brain, which is weak, is not controlling it, okay? On the contrary, you see a lot of very good small muscle control or fine motor skills like playing with Legos or Lincoln Logs or something like that. Kids with these disorders with a stronger left brain can do that for hours, but yet they have very poor large muscle control, very poor posture, and poor spatial awareness. Okay, and that's why. So that right brain weakness will do that. As far as, you know, when we come down here, uh, as far as schoolwork goes, right? So we'll see, with especially with ADHD, what, what will start to happen is they won't be able to... Um, comprehend certain things like reading comprehension when they look when you look at their standardized testing the reading comprehension as they age gets worse and worse that's because their right brain is weak they're reading they can read very well right word reading is a left brain trait but they are not comprehending well what they're reading math reasoning is the same way okay math calculations on the left pretty good Math reasoning, though, is poor. So what we can do is go through those standardized tests and start looking for these right or left brain weaknesses or strengths, okay? And start to find out if the child is more right brain or more left brain, just as an example, okay? Here's one down here that I wanted to throw in. High frequency sound, if you look on the left, if, if you can see my pointer there, and low frequency light. So low, high frequency sound and low frequency light is basically TV and computer games. So if you have a child that has a right brain weakness, okay, and a left strong brain, and they're in front of the computer or the video game a long time, they're only increasing their imbalance, okay? So we'll hear parents all the time, I don't understand, they can't sit still in school, but they'll sit in front of a computer or video game for hours. Well, the reason is, is because it's stimulating an already strong left brain where low frequency sound and high frequency light is um, is a right brain trait okay so just just again uh, just for understanding purposes to give you an idea here another one down here you see on the right cautious and safe actions right brain is your brake pedal left brain is your gas pedal if the right brain is weak you're not going to have that subconscious that tells you hey I shouldn't do that, okay? You're only going to be on full gas, which means the left brain strong, you don't have a right brain, uh, or you have a right brain weakness that has no brake pedal, so you're gonna be very curious and impulsive, and you're gonna do things that are gonna be very impulsive, acting out in class without thinking about it, uh, calling out before your turn is up, etc. Those are because you do not have the, the patients diagnosed with a right brain weakness do not have the cautious, safe action part of their brain working, okay? So they have more gas pedal than brake pedal. Another thing we'll see is that right brain over here suppresses the immune system and left brain activates it. 
So if you have a, a left brain dominance, you're going to see uh, higher amounts of allergies and asthma and uh, immune system overload, okay? And uh, that's because the right brain is supposed to keep that balance in that immune system. Another thing we'll see, we see a lot of these uh, diagnosed with neurological disorders, uh, these patients diagnosed, have a poor sense of taste and smell, and consequently they're very picky eaters. And that's because they don't taste or smell very well, okay? Digestive disturbances are very common with, uh, with right brain weakness as well. So just to give you an idea, once again, I missed this one here, IQ, so a lot of these patients diagnosed have very high IQs because their left brain is, is that IQ and, and very smart, intelligent people here. So that's where the savants come from. Over here, the right brain is more emotional IQ, okay? So just to give you an idea of left brain versus right brain and why some of these characteristics develop, and it's based on the weakness that it's occurring. Wherever the weakness is in the brain, whether it's left or right hemisphere, you're going to have these characteristics develop, okay? So very important to understand that. I just went over a few with you. You can look at those and really understand uh, why your child or yourself might be presenting the way you are based on that imbalance, okay? So left brain versus right brain. All right, as far as I put this in here from a paradigm standpoint, as far as how we work to um, fix these problems, okay? We're more interested in what I call an inside-out approach. We're trying to get the body balanced, okay? Trying to get the body functioning better, trying to get the brain functioning better, but it comes with understanding, okay? So as I'll go over in a little bit, we see a lot of metabolic problems with uh, patients diagnosed with these neurological disorders. And what I mean by that, everything from leaky gut uh, to autoimmune conditions, digestive problems, uh, neurotransmitter problems, problems with um, possible foods crossing the blood-brain barrier, uh, etc. Okay, now, there's two ways to handle that. Number one, fix it, or number two, give medication to cover it up. We're not interested in just giving medication to cover it up. We're interested in getting those problems fixed, but it's because we understand the problems, okay? and we understand how to correct the problems once we are able to diagnose, okay? So outside-in approach is basically what the general uh, medical model does, which again, we know it's necessary, and short-term, I'm okay with. But longer-term, we certainly want to try to correct the problem, not just pacify or cover it up, okay? So we'll move on. All right, brain development. This is another very important slide. Essentially, the brain is not fully formed at birth, okay? And to take it a step further, neonatally, during um, womb, in the womb, okay, developmental, the brain developing in the womb, and the first two years of life, essentially the right side of the brain is the one that's developing more than any, okay? So a lot of these neurological disorders like autism, ADHD, the autistic autistic spectrum disorders are thought to develop sometime neonatally and or in the first two years of life and there are many reasons for that and I'll go over that in just a little while but that is where they think a lot of these problems can occur and what happens basically is something okay and we'll talk about that as far as causes causes the brain to kind of suspend its development and the right brain becomes weak in those cases and with that because of those weaknesses, you get the characteristics that are developed. So the brain in general requires fuel and activation. Fuel in the form of glucose and oxygen, activation in the form of stimulation. Includes light, sound and vibration, odor, taste, temperature, touch, and pressure and gravity, which is one of the most, one, uh, most important ones, okay? So again, in order to stimulate the brain and activate the brain, needs glucose and oxygen constantly, okay? And a lot of patients that are diagnosed with these neurological disorders are not getting enough glucose and oxygen to the brain and they're not getting enough proper activation and when I say proper activation as we talked about earlier hemispheric integration therapy works with just the weak side of the brain not the entire side of the brain the stimulation has to be in the right timing frequency and duration and as long as that happens as you'll see in, a, in the next slide as long as that happens the brain has the ability 
to reform okay and get stronger just like a bicep muscle or a muscle in your body if you work it hard enough it gets stronger all right so the prefrontal cortex or the cerebral cortex excuse me cortex is a clean slate so I'm gonna pop into the picture right here and I just want to show you uh, a couple things with the brain so the entire brains here you have your cerebellum and your lower brain centers here the prefrontal and frontal cortex this area here is wired for greatness okay in almost every person that's born that area that I just explained is wired for greatness however okay and this is another key point it will only get strong and do what it's supposed to do which is your higher brain center socialization behavior things like that if it's fed properly from these lower brain centers okay so when we're working the brain we understand that some of these lower brain centers have to be or are weak and have to be strengthened in order to feed the frontal and prefrontal cortex once that happens then that clean state slate starts to develop properly and you get your higher brain functions stronger and better okay so give you an example I see a lot of therapies that will excuse me that will try to work on socialization and behavior and some of these higher brain functions and what they don't recognize is that these areas are weak not feeding this area properly and that in neuroscience that's very well known it's just not being applied in the therapy part of it okay so this is this example is like trying to strengthen your bicep muscle without having an arm you need the arm first in order for the bicep to get stronger this is perfect example so a lot of therapies that try to stimulate this area of the brain are going to fail because these areas back here need to be strengthened first so there is actually a hierarchy that we need to do in order to get that brain that clean slate in this frontal cortex to do what we're supposed to do okay so behavior socialization things like that happen in that frontal brain so if there's children that have these problems it's because that area is not getting fed properly from these lower brain centers like the cerebellum etc okay so I wanted to make that point very relevant because it's super important to understand that a lot of therapies just absolutely do not recognize that from a neuroscience standpoint okay so this area is responsible for how a child will act and achieve it may be wired for greatness but neural activity or stimulation from other areas will allow it to happen so once again if those other areas these lower brain centers are weak that frontal cortex has very little chance of developing properly okay that's very very important if you need to rewind that I'd highly encourage you to do so so when we're treating the brain okay we talked about it it needs glucose and, and oxygen and it needs activation one-sided activation and brain-based rehabilitation okay now in the sense of fuel oxygen and glucose a lot of these children have what we call dysglycemia which is an, an imbalance in their blood glucose levels okay and if that's happening the glucose is not getting into the cell and being used for energy it is staying in the blood being um, stored as as fat and triglycerides etc so that's something that we look at first and foremost with every child to see if they have blood glucose imbalances okay and then also we'll use oxygen therapy in order to get the max amount of oxygen to the brain there's many many studies now out that tell that talk about the lack of proper oxygen content that we get in our body day, day in and day out and when we're working with the brain we want to make sure that a person gets enough oxygen when we're doing our exercises with them okay and then the activation part we'll talk about with hemispheric integration therapy okay this slide again when we talked about the fact that there's no lesions in in the brain with uh, patients diagnosed with these early childhood neurological disorders it's just a weakness and this slide here if you've ever heard of the term neuroplasticity I would highly recommend googling that term what this means it's basically saying that your brain is malleable it's pliable and it continually reorganizes itself okay and it means that you create your brain from the input you get right so again when we're talking about these disorders somewhere along the line for for multiple reasons and we'll talk about those in a second the brain kind of suspended its animation it stopped developing 
or, or the development slowed down considerably, okay? But, but because of neuroplasticity and the fact that a brain older than three years is not a rigid structure as scientists once thought, but it's a malleable plastic organ, okay? That right there, just the understanding of neuroplasticity will tell you that the brain can be strengthened. It is pliable and malleable. It is just like a muscle of the body. The more you work it, the stronger it will get, okay? So that neuroplasticity is huge. And there are, if you type or Google neuroplasticity, you literally could read thousands and thousands and thousands of research articles on that, okay? So that is basically the hope in understanding that you stimulate the brain, it gets stronger. Again, just to be specific about hemispheric integration therapy, it's stimulating one side of the brain, okay, and then the areas within that side of the brain that are found weak during a neurological exam, and we'll talk about that, okay? Here's a list scientifically of some of the probable acceptable causes. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to direct you to my website or a couple websites. On uh, one of the websites, I wrote down and listed the probable acceptable causes, and I wrote could be up 50, 100 to 3, 400 words uh, on each of these to let you know what science is, is talking about, especially if you go through reactions to vaccinations. On the website that I'll explain at the end of this or direct you to at the end of this, it will go through what the most uh, well-accepted theory to date is on that. And I think you'll see... Um, and I may, I may actually go through that in just a second because it's so important. Epigenetics, it'll talk about that. Foods definitely are a big problem uh, in the form of leaky gut, which I talk about on the website in depth. Inadequate nutrition, environmental toxins, stressful lifestyles, stressful pregnancies and birth. Television and computer games are definitely absentee parent, parenting, overweight and obesity, lack of physical exercise, etc. So... In general, this, these are just generalizations. It's not saying that they apply to every child or your child or you specifically. It's just saying this is what we think is happening. And the, the big picture is that we're just not near as active as we used to be. And scientists think that even hundreds and hundreds of years ago, children may have been born with a weaker hemisphere of the brain. But because they were out and they played and they jumped and they ran, that weakness was possibly overcome at a very early age. That stimulation caused the brain to get stronger on the one side and then that imbalance was lessened. Nowadays, we don't see the activity as much just as a generalization. It's not saying it's the only cause or anything like that, but it's a, it's a factor for sure. Real quick, with vaccinations, and again, I, I, wrote, I write this... Uh, on my website and give you my uh, my research on it but here's essentially what happens the human body at the time a vaccination is giving given something is going on with the immune system and it's not a good thing meaning the immune system is in a heightened state of response when that vaccination is given to a child with a heightened immune response it's like giving gasoline or fire to a to gasoline it causes the immune system to basically go haywire and that affects the brain dramatically okay so it's not the vaccinations themselves that's the problem it's when the vaccinations are introduced to an immu a, a system uh, a person's body where the immune system is in a heightened state give you a quick uh, example you go to the to the doctors for vaccinations with your child and if they have a fever they will not do the vaccinations. Why? Because they know the immune system is kicked into high gear. You add a vaccination that's going to stimulate antibody production and it could go haywire. Well, take your child to the, to the doctors. They may have an immune system reaction that you're just not aware of, okay? And because of that, the vaccination's introduced and boom, something goes haywire, okay? The one of the points that I'll make, and I make this on the website, is that the tough part is you don't know, if you don't know as a parent what's going on with your child, and there's, it's very difficult to test that immune system, then, and then the vaccination is introduced, then boom, you have a big problem, 
that disrupts the brain activity. So what do you do? Well, as I, as I put down on, on the website, one of the best things you can do is wait. And that's wait till the brain is fully developed, roughly after the age of two years. Okay? And I go over that, and that's just that's what other countries do, that's what a lot of the research talks about, etc. Okay? So I'm not going to waste too much more time because I do have that on the website and it's um, it's easy reading too. Okay? Alright, let's move on. So those are some of the causes. Basically what others are doing, as you can surmise to this point, three, three or two main things. Number one, most are approaching the treatment as a single problem. Autism is a social and communication problem. ADHD is a hyperactivity or attention problem, etc. And the treatment is based on controlling the symptoms. All right? It is not based on fixing the problem. It is not even close to addressing that. Okay? As well, many of the therapies are designed to stimulate the whole brain, not a specific side, and certainly not specific areas in specific orders. Right? So remember we talked about brain development. development there are hierarchies. Well, again, when we, un when we examine a child or a person with these neurological disorders and we find that certain areas of the brain, the hemisphere is weak on one side versus the other, then we have to go in and identify, is it cerebellum? Is it, as a matter of fact, is it medial, lateral, intermediate cerebellum? Is it temporal lobes, occipital lobes, parietal lobes? Is it basal ganglion? Is it amygdala? Where are these disruptions happening? Where are the weaknesses? So not only do we want to recognize the hemisphere, we then want to go in and recognize where or what parts of the hemisphere are not doing well. Okay? So but with other therapies not understanding this properly, treatment to this point has been mediocre at best, okay, and, and studies prove it, and can even make the problem worse. If you're, if you're stimulating a left brain that's already stronger, you're making that imbalance worse, okay? These are the result of the bigger problem and treatments that are designed to simply manage the symptoms. Again, the bigger problem is that your child doesn't have necessarily autism, ADHD, whatever. They have a brain imbalance. That's the problem, okay? So you can surmise at this point based on if you're somebody that has taken your child to many different therapies, this, there's not many, if any, out there that are doing it to this degree and the understanding is to this degree. Okay? So common medical interventions, obviously drugs, and, and I'm not opposed to drugs short term, but if that's the only plan, it's a very poor pan, uh, plan. Okay? So they, they basically don't fix anything, they just cover the, the problem up. However, I understand that families have to function, things have to uh, get better, and some of the medication may do that, but again, a short-term plan at best, okay? So the risks are huge. Studies show 500% increase in sudden heart attack in kids on Ritalin, etc. There's study after study out here that they're starting to come out with on the uh, dangers. And basically there's no long-term studies on these things. So even though they might be able to help today, they might really cause damage down the road. All right, so what is the overall fix in the plan, etc.? So hemispheric integration therapy, oxygen therapy, and lab work, right? So step one is to identify the disconnect. We talked about that. How do you do that? Well, there's history and detailed questionnaires, etc. will lead us in a direction. Okay, so when a patient comes in, we send uh, the parents or the patient home with a lot of detailed questionnaires that will help us break down hemisphericity or at least give us a, an idea of where to look, okay? or narrow it down. And then we do a detailed neurological exam which can include hundreds of different tests for specific areas of the brain. Okay, So we can not only identify the hemisphere with these tests, we can certainly identify what areas within the brain. Is it the cerebellum? Is it intermediate lateral or medial cerebellum? Is it parietal or temporal lobes? Is it amygdala, basal ganglion, etc.? We can identify these areas with a good neurological exam. Okay, so step two is identify, right, via specific lab work, common threads. Now, what do I say with common threads? Well, more and more we're finding things like anemia and blood glucose dysregulation, chronic infections going on in these children, especially in the gut. Uh, we see leaky gut that, that causes an immune reaction that then can ca cross the blood-brain barrier. We see neurotransmitter problems. We see... Um, immune system, autoimmune type of conditions. So we see a lot of these common threads 
that first and foremost have to be identified because if those are going on consistently what they're going to do is constantly cause the brain to disconnect or to misfire okay and we see this I'll be treating somebody a patient for months they're doing phenomenally well and then they have a really bad day well that bad day means that something internally or what we call metabolically caused the brain to misfire that day and we have to figure that out was it foods was it leaky gut was it neurotransmitter what caused that misfiring okay so this is not only a brain imbalance but it also we find common problems with these children and or adults who have been diagnosed uh, in the digestive system in the immune system with the endocrine system etc but specific lab work can identify not only your complete blood counts and your complete metabolic panels but sometimes we do food sensitivity testing we'll do uh, stool testing uh, we'll do neurotransmitter testing etc trying to figure out anything that could be going on that's causing this brain to malfunction on a day in and day out basis okay and the literature and science is extremely clear on a lot of these okay so there's common things that we see with with all of these patients that have been diagnosed with these neurological disorders that have to be looked at okay part of my background that I didn't list on the um, my biography is I have hundreds and hundreds of hours in the fields of blood chemistry functional nutrition functional endocrinology okay so and 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 labs these specific labs especially when it comes to autism and ADHD and then step three is to fix exactly what's found if we have brain imbalance hemisphericity work on that if you have specific lab does that come back that that we have these leaky guts there we have very specific protocols scientifically proven protocols in order to fix these problems okay once in a while we may have to get uh, ancillary uh, medical help with if we have bad infections in the gut that may need some medication etc uh, we will do that we will bring in somebody uh, to the plan that can help with that however for the most part we're fixing anything that we find that is going to get that brain working better but more importantly getting the body to function at an optimal level and work at an optimal level most of these patients that are diagnosed with these problems their bodies are not working very well at all at a cellular level because of those common threads that we talked about okay so that's the plan hemispheric integration therapy just work on the weak side of the brain and the areas within that weak side that need help okay that are identified with the full neurological exam oxygen therapy lab work and then integrative nutritional protocols that work really really well okay so activation of the brain can be in so many different forms there's literally hundreds of things that we can do and in the book that I'll talk about in just a second Dr. Malila will go through uh, a lot of those therapies but they can include uh, working with the ears okay working with uh, one-sided adjustments brain-based music eye lights vibration therapy interactive me metronome exercise with oxygen ther therapy olfactory stimulation I mean honestly there could be literally hundreds of different therapies but each patient or person that's been diagnosed may have a different routine or a different plan based on what areas of their hemisphere is weak okay so it just depends on what's found as to what kind of therapies we could prescribe but the activation is on one side of the brain only to reduce that imbalance all right so just real quick these are stats that I pulled out uh, just this in 2010 2011 here ADHD costs fifteen thousand dollars per year out of pocket per family autism thirty thousand per year out of pocket and that's just to manage the problem not to help fix it okay ours is designed to help fix the problem and we already explained when I say correct or fix what the biggest challenge is it just depends on the amount of disconnect okay all right cutting edge brain based therapy there are only a handful of doctors on the planet trained in this cutting edge treatment it's the most successful and advanced treatment on the planet today okay so the next step what's the next step well we always offer two free visits where you could come in bring you yourself or your child can come in and we could sit down and do an initial evaluation on the first day 
okay, review history, review all the forms that we have you fill out, uh, that, that we send out to you, and then uh, on the next, following day or following visit, we can sit down and devise a plan. Now, may we have to send out for some lab work, etc. That's always a possibility. But on that first day, we can at least figure that out, okay? So we want to make sure all involved parties in your child's life watch the DVD. That's anybody that, that's around the child, grandparents, teachers, etc. Why? Because they need to understand the, the hemisphericity. They need to understand right brain versus left brain, etc. These parties are required to sign the affidavit. We want you to complete the hemispheric isolation checklist, which comes in the packet, with all the totals completed. You'll understand this when you see it. Complete the intake forms to the best of your ability. Take your time, okay? Fax or mail all paperwork at least two days prior to the date of your child's exam. I need time to review the paperwork, and I spend literally hours doing this, okay? No paperwork, no exam. It's that simple. And, and as always, I wish you the best, okay? Let me go to this next slide so you can see the more information, right? The website is www.ocautismadhdhelp.com or www.askdrdanielroney.com. The book is Disconnected Kids by Dr. Robert Melillo. You can get that at Borders, Barnes and Nobles, wherever. Again, that book is required reading for anybody that comes into my office. If you have more questions or concerns, as with all the paperwork that was sent with this DVD, you can call me at 714-241-9355. Okay, just to, just to go back here, one of the things that, uh, that I promise the patients that come in is that I truly, truly have a purpose. And the purpose is to make sure that no rock is left unturned, okay, when trying to find the answers for your child, you or your child. And I continually am going to school to learn the newest uh, information out there. Now, hemispheric integration therapy, uh, you know, compared to everything else, is phenomenal. It's, it's the best of the best. But more so, we're trying to learn more on the metabolic things, the blood chemistry, what else is going on. So my promise to you is that almost every day, I'm trying to learn more and more about, about these neurological disorders. But in general, the, and you'll see this on the website, the testimonials will, will, will give you the, um, the, the basis uh, and the background uh, of experience that these patients have had with me. But in general, we have moms that have taken their children to 20 different things over the last five years, and within two to three months with me, doing hemisphericity, uh, hemispheric integration therapy, making sure the blood chems are good, etc., and they've gotten better results in two to four months than they have in seven years. And uh, you'll see that on the website. So, so take your time. You can go to the websites and uh, look at the testimonials, click around, learn about the causes, and you can ask me any questions that you feel uh, you want to when you come in and or you can call me at any time. Okay? Either way, I wish you the best and good luck to you and I hope in the future we can work together and I can certainly help you in any way I can. Okay, good luck to you all.